Well, hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan. I'm the editor of The Banker. I'm here with uh, Silvia Pavoni, who's the investment editor. And we're going to be talking about uh, development banks. Now, at The Banker, we do a lot of work with development banks. Uh, we produce uh, special reports for their annual meetings. And we are always pleased to go and talk to the delegates at the meetings of, for example, the Asian Development Bank and the African Development Bank and uh, shortly the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is having its annual meeting. Before the financial crisis, um, people were saying that perhaps the development banks didn't really have a role. They were thinking that markets could probably do all the kind of work that the development banks were doing, for example, in the areas of uh, infrastructure and so on. But since the financial crisis, uh, they've enjoyed a bit of a renaissance, uh, Silver, is that right? And uh, people are saying, well, you know, the development bank now is a very integral part of uh, you know, a general approach to economic development. And I think you've been doing a lot of work on how the banks finance themselves. Are there sort of new trends in the way they finance themselves that are, that are different from how they were doing it? Well, it certainly seems that uh, development banks are looking at capital markets uh, more and more um, as a way of um, increasing their funding um, uh, strategy. Um, doing this, of course, also means that they're helping local, develop local uh, capital markets to grow when, when they're issuing local currencies. Um, and whether in the past, this was um, a, um, a case um, limited in, in the number of issuances that uh, these banks were doing. Now it seems like that these issuances are becoming more and more popular um, and that the uptake is actually very interesting. And are the banks finding it easy to finance themselves at the moment? Um, the, um, uh, they are, uh, they've gone back to, or they're getting back to uh, the, the, their usual interest rates um, uh, for, for, for such loans, while, of course, during the crisis, they were up 30 or 35 basis points. Now they went back to LIBOR. Um, but, um, uh, of course, one of, um, again, issuing in, um, in, the, local in, the, in the local currencies also helps, um, uh, as I was saying, creating a, a domestic uh, investor base, which... Uh, yeah, obviously the development banks have always felt it was part of their rationale to try and develop local capital markets. So we've oft we have seen them in the past, but I think what you're saying is increasingly frequently now, uh, is issuing in currencies that are not standard currencies for international banks to that, issue in. That's very true. But one of the things that uh, you were telling me earlier is that uh, the, the banks now are s as focused much on lending to the private sector as they are to, to government areas. Um, and the EBRD has been something of a leader in that direction. EBRD is certainly a leader in this um, um, about working with the private sector. And um, uh, other development banks apparently have been reported as being uh, feeling a little bit time use of, of their mandate. Uh, clearly, the EBRD is, uh, is one of the most recent development banks and therefore it has perhaps a more modern uptake of... Um, because they are allowed to, to lend almost as much as they like in the private sector, but, but some of the other banks are, restri banks, are they, restricted, are they? They have a restriction on the percentage of, of the funds that go to the private sector, that's true. Um, and uh, the EBRD, EBRD feels that working with the private sector, of course, is uh, the most efficient way of supporting a local economy, uh, while other banks still are um, forced to, to work primarily with, uh, with the governments. So this is something that perhaps we're going to, to see changing in the, in the near future as well. So now you do a lot of work in Latin America. Uh, what sort of initiatives is the Inter-American Development Bank taking in, uh, in Latin America? I mean, and are they, are they just doing mm -hmm. the old-fashioned sort of uh, infrastructure work or are they also doing other things like uh, sometimes development banks work with uh, the legal structure and sort of softer issues like uh, women's issues and so forth? The Inter-American <coughs> Development Bank is certainly working on, on the full scope of, uh, mm. of uh, issues where, you, where they can put an input in. But, but um, looking at the smaller development banks, I think, is where we can find the bigger surprises. Uh, looking at um, CAF, for example, the Corporación of um, Andina de Fomento, and um, uh, CABE, which is um, the Central American Development Bank. Uh, they've both been working with the very small uh, local markets to develop their uh, capital markets. Um, and particularly CABE has done a really interesting, um, I'm sorry, CAF has done a really interesting issue in uh, Colombian pesos um, for um, a size which is, which is relatively big for the local market, which is um, 240 million, and, and that was really well received. And uh, going back to Kabe, now the, uh, the um, funding structure is, uh, is coming 50% from the capital markets, which is a really interesting development. It's, it's very high considering the level of the other uh, development banks. Uh, and they've had a really big increase um, 
in 2009. So if whether while in 2007 the uh, issuances were around $200 uh, million, 2008, of course, they, they got a hit and it went down to 150 and 2009 saw them raising over uh, $1 billion, which is a, a big increase. So the banks seem to have come back strongly. Um, I, I mean, were they knocked sideways at all by the impact of the financial markets? And now we're seeing, you know, we're still seeing spillover from the financial crisis. Sure. We've seen the problems in, in Greece. What sort of impact is that having on the development banks? Uh, the, the financial crisis forced everybody to uh, be a little bit more creative with, uh, with their means. Uh, the same uh, worked for the development banks, of course, as well. So they, they all had to come up with different ways of, uh, of channeling their funds, um, either putting funds on standby, which, which is something they, it's a measure that has been unprecedented, or uh, going through, for example, the, the headquarters to then re-channel uh, the money um, to the different branches. Um, that also forced them to look at their cost base and, uh, the, uh, and to become more efficient. So asset and, li and liability management are tools that some of the banks are talking about now, so something that uh, they might want to, uh, to improve um, in the future. Um, and again, the cost of funding is, uh, is an issue. Okay, so it seems like there's a lot of material going on in the uh, development banking sector. We look forward to reading Sylvia's report in the June issue. And uh, you can meet us at most of the meetings, so we look forward to meeting you there in the future.